You're listening to Emerson Whitner's NXT Report on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Emerson Whitner, and this is your NXT Audio Update for Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. It is my five-year anniversary doing NXT reviews right here online for you fine people out there listening to me. The very first match I ever reviewed, I've said this a number of times, you can go back and watch. It was Caitlyn versus Maxine in October of 2010, which eventually was voted the 2010 Worst Work Match of the Year in the Wrestling Observer Awards. Somehow, that didn't scare me off, and I came back for more. Mostly because I knew it couldn't get any worse than that. <laughs> um, so this week's show opened up with a video package for uh, going down last week's Battle Royal. They actually aired almost every elimination, including focusing the last 20 seconds or so on the final two, before showing Apollo Crews standing victorious as your new number one contender. We started things off in the ring when Asuka submitted Billy Kay. Um, I haven't had the chance to say this lately, but Asuka has a really awesome theme song. Um, so in case you haven't... If you haven't watched her wrestle, please go watch it on the, on the WWE Network for only $9.99. Um, she's great. Uh, and NXT, you know, they've filled themselves back up with some good women And I'm looking forward to the future. I'll tell you that. Um, Billy Kay's fame is that she has the longest legs in NXT. Personally, I like that they're long enough to touch the ground. Billy grounded Asuka, and Asuka stood up and just smiled at her before slapping on a rolling armbar and then hitting both a German souffle and a running knee to the head before finishing, finishing things off with the Asuka lock, which is the cross-faced chicken wing with a body scissors. Last week, Baron Corbin and Rhino's alliance sadly fell apart during the Battle Royal, so tonight they will go one-on-one in the main event. And that led us to a Baron Corbin video package. It was actually the same Baron Corbin video that aired two or three months ago, so nothing new. Tyler Breeze pulled out his uh, phone and cut a selfie promo on Samoa Joe. Breeze took offense to being eliminated last week and said that if he isn't the number one contender, then Joe will never be. Um, And Breeze did challenge him to a match and threatened to slice off a couple pieces of bacon. We found out later that that match was made for next week. Um, Up next, Dash and Dawson went 2 on 2 uh, with Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy, Dash and Dawson do not get an automatic title shot after defeating the VOD villains during the Dusty Rhodes Classic. Um, the match went two minutes. Um, the heels got the heat on Enzo the entire time. They worked on his knee and worked on his knee and worked on his knee. Dawson ran over and knocked Colin off the apron, but when he turned around, he immediately got small patched by Enzo, and Enzo picked up the win. Um, After the match, Dash and Dawson immediately beat down Enzo, and then when Colin ran in for the save, beat him down as well, and eventually hit their double-team flapjack slash codebreaker on Colin Cassidy. A Rhino video package aired, including footage of him in early 2000s as the ECW champion, hardcore champion, and WCW US champion, and brought it full circle, showing him goring the entire world while they aired Paul Heyman's 2001 commentary, screaming gore, gore, gore. A quick joke. What candidate did Rhino vote for in 2000? That's right, Al. Gore, gore, gore. Okay, I'll stop now. Eva Marie is still on vacation. She hopes we all miss her and never forget about her. Personally, I wish she never returns. Um... We saw the debut of former TNA World Heavyweight Champion James Storm as he pinned Danny Birch. Um, the fans, even though you know this was taped the night after Takeover, when everyone expected James Storm to show up, then you could tell they were surprised to see him. 
and they went crazy for the former world champion. Um, they uh, celebrated like he was the second coming of Jesus. Um, the uh, the announcers actually acknowledged that he was in WCW for a cup of coffee in 2000, 2001, but said he spent the last 15 years on the independent scene. Um, the fans chanted, you belong here, Adam. Storm looked good in his match against Danny Birch, winning with the eight-second ride. Let it be known his debut was better than Chris Harris's WWE debut, but that's not a very high standard to reach. Um, he didn't cut a promo, but he did scream, sorry about your damn luck at Birch afterwards. I was surprised he didn't use the super kick, but at the same time I wasn't surprised. Because, I mean, that Shawn Michaels finisher, even though he hasn't used it in forever. And heck, that's also Tyler Breeze's, uh, one of his setup moves. They announced that in two weeks, it'll be Finn Balor versus Apollo Crews for the NXT Championship which led to part one of a two-part Apollo Crews in-depth video talking about him growing up, being a wrestling fan, and ulti- specifically an Ultimate Warrior fan, uh, talk about him begging his mom to buy him a toy belt. I know the pain, Apollo. Uh, I remember those days of begging for belts, too. They showed a lot of footage from him in Evolve, um, and they also commented that I guess his dad wasn't there, or at least there a lot of the time, And that uh, early on in his career, he was doing it to show up his father. Um, A Nia Jax video aired. It will not be eight weeks until her next match. It'll only be one. She's wrestling next week. Alexa Bliss pinned Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce had the weirdest reaction I've ever seen to a person on NXT. When she walked out, no one made any noise for her at all. None. No one clapped, no one cheered, no one booed, no one did anything. And then she got in the ring, and out of apathy, about ten people tried to start a Peyton Royce chant. Um, Alexa Bliss is so short. How short is she? Alexa Bliss is so short that at one point she stood on Peyton and was barely a hair taller than the referee. Um, Peyton kicked Alexa a lot. But it just led to Alexa getting more offense. Um, Bliss did a standing moonsault, but it ended with a double knees to the gut. And then won with the sparkle splash. After the match, Alexa cut a promo on Bailey, saying that Alexa is what everyone strives to be. And she was made to be the NXT Women's Champion. Main event time, Baron Corbin versus Rhino. Uh, These two sports entertained at NXT TakeOver Unstoppable in Maine, which up to that point was Corbin's best and longest match, uh, both of which were beaten by the Samoa Joe match in August. Um, Rhino beat on Baron until Corbin rolled outside the ring. Rhino ran after him, but Corbin shoved him in the chest and eventually threw him into the ring steps to take over. Uh, Rhino almost actually didn't get back into the ring before the 10 count, but did. So as soon as he got back in, Corbin hit every move in the world on uh, poor Rhino um, and then got frustrated when Rhino didn't lose, even though these were all moves that Corbin has never won a match with. Corey Graves made his weekly stupid comment. Uh, he commented that no, uh, how Mike Tyson came out of nowhere to win the heavyweight boxing championship, which showed just how little he knows because... Um, Corbin actually, or I'm sorry, actually Tyson, um, made quite the name for himself before challenging for the belt and was actually pretty well known at that point. Uh, Rhino made his comeback before, uh, hitting the belly to belly souffle and the Arn Anderson spine buster for a near fall. He went for the gore, but got kicked in the face. He then actually hit it a second time and somehow Corbin kicked out a two. Rhino went for a third gore, but as he went charging, uh, Corbin turned it into the end of days somehow and picked up the win. Um, the show ended with Samoa Joe cutting a promo on Tyler Breeze backstage. Joe called him a desperate man, and in his desperation, he cost Joe his rightful title shot. He said Tyler had the audacity to call him out, so Joe told him to primp and take the most perfect photo he could because next week 
he'll never look the same again. Um, so it was a great promo to end the show, and with that, we are done for the week. Thank you all for listening. I want to remind you, my birthday is on the 29th, so you know, make sure to send your money to me. Um, I'll send you my address, and you can send me some cash. I think that's you know the best thing to do in the situation. But until next week, thank you for listening, take care, and have a good rest of your week. You're listening to Emerson Whitner's NXT Report on the Angry Marks Podcast Network.